All right, now here's what we're getting ready to do. This is going to get really exciting here. And it's going to really open up the possibility of creating a great painting, or it also opens up the possibility of making a disaster out of this. I'm not trying to scare you. Just remember the negative space rule and you'll be just fine, okay? Now, using your number 10 bristle brush, going down here to our palette, let's go ahead and sort of pre mix a pile of color here. I'll start with a little gesso, just for the opaqueness of it. A little water in there. Then I want you to take some Hooker's Green, some purple, a little sienna, <clears throat> a little blue. Just mix all that together and we'll take a look at it. It's going to be too green right now, but that's okay. This mossy stuff is sort of a gray green, but it's going to have to be much darker than this. So put some more purple in there, a little more sienna in there. It does definitely has to have a greenish gray tint to it. Now that looks pretty good right there. <clears throat> Let's test this out. It may not be dark enough, but we'll see. Yeah, I tell you what, let's make it just a little bit darker, a little more green, a little more purple, a little more sienna, touch more green there. Work it in good to your brush. It really is fun. Okay, now this is all vertical strokes, folks. <coughs> and by the way, if you'll take a look at this and notice that the reason this is so reddish it's just simply because of the time of the day, the atmosphere, and the glow that we've got. Mine's more in, in the, a different kind of tone, so, you know, it's not, it's six of one, half a dozen of another, just depending on what you're trying to achieve. Now, here's the way this works. Find some of your, it's a good place to start is on your little um, arms, and you just put your brush like this at the top of it, and you pull down. Now, watch this carefully. Now, see how that's working now? They're going to close in good. See how I pull that down? Now notice how it dry brushes against that textured background and leaves those little rough edges. That's exactly the effect you're after. Okay? All of these are going to do that. And see, don't be afraid to run into some of the other ones. Now, this is the top of this one in the distance, so we're going to head and build. Now this is where the... I'm going to turn my brush around. I want you to look at this. See how it's twisted like that? That's where it's just absolutely perfect for this kind of painting. So you can use just little different angles of that brush, okay? All right, now, and not to say that at the top, I'll kind of pull this here where you can see it. See the very tops there? Those are kind of more where you just dab it, okay? That's more of a leafy-like effect, and then you drag it down. All right, so when you get to the top of this tree right here, you just kind of dab it. That will kind of form the top of your tree. And then when you get to the other areas of it, you drag it down. And you'll have to mix this and play with the mixture until you're satisfied with the dryness or the wetness of it, okay? <clears throat> Reload. Now, I'm going to, and by the way, there's no particular place here that's any better than the other to start. I just usually pick a, an arm and just dry brush down just because it gives me sort of a place to get started. You could start up here if you wanted to, like this. So you're just kind of pulling it down, just a quick jerk down like that, skimming the surface of the canvas. Now it is important that whatever limbs you put in there, you get those fairly well covered. <clears throat> yeah, you make it a little more solid at the top, but see, I can come down way down like this. Now, if you have to switch to a smaller brush. You can do that. I, I wouldn't recommend it just yet, but in a minute you may want to, like your number six sable. And yes, we may come in and highlight some of this a little bit. Man, I like that. But notice I'm being very careful now. <clears throat> Extremely careful about leaving these pockets of space. Now, if you need to add water, I'm going to give you a little tip, and I've told you this before. Instead of dipping into your can here, okay, <clears throat> come down and just find a spot. Maybe even take your mister bottle and just put a little puddle or two out and just dip off of that for your water. That way you don't get too much. 
but because your paints are going to be evaporating all the time, you need to rehydrate it fairly often. So keep some moisture going there. And you dry brush down like this. Just keep moving very gently. Some places you skim it very lightly. Some places, like here, I want to put on a little thicker because it will be the top of the tree and you'll actually just see a leafy effect. And then you go into the dry brush downward stroke. And remember, all these trees are kind of built together. I don't know what made me think of this, but because it's quite the opposite in, in the atmosphere, but over in Africa, you know, they have the acacia tree that sort of do a similar thing. They just sort of leaf out in a big fan shape, and those are fun to paint too. We'll probably do some paintings from Africa sometime. We've had several requests for some real unusual things like doing some elephants and things, and I have to tell you, I would like to do that. I did a beautiful giraffe painting here a while back. I gave it to my wife because she loves giraffes. And uh, it's a mama giraffe and a baby giraffe getting a drink of water over in, in Africa. It's a neat painting, one of my favorites. So we'll probably branch off and do a few things like that from time to time, okay? See, I'm dry brushing right on down there, leaving some nice pockets of space in there. That's what's given this its character. <clears throat> now I see a spot here where I'm going to do something. I'm going to have a limb. I'm going to take my number six bristle brush. I'm going to go ahead and have a limb that comes out here just a little bit. I'm going to come off of that limb like this. I want to leave a little bit of the limb showing there, but I'll dry brush down some moss just like this on the end of it. So that makes it have, you know, this gives it just a little more interest. Yeah, I like that. See, it's like, kind of like this limb here. See, it kind of sticks out there. It's all by itself. And this one here just adds a little interest to the painting. So always be thinking about that. And then there, see, just a little pull down like that. I'm going to pull this down a little further. Boy, you got to be careful. Make sure everything is well blended together and sort of disguised one stroke into another. Okay, it looks pretty good.